morning. Charlene, your uh, presentation was so encouraging and so good that I kind of feel like you should be up here and I can still <laughs> sit down. But thank you for sharing. Uh, it was a very moving, um, very moving testimony you gave. We appreciate it. Uh, those who have been with us for the last couple months know that we've been looking at the book of Acts. Uh, and thus far, we've primarily seen some major figures in the book of Acts. The first half uh, we looked at, or we, we saw primarily Peter, and then the latter half we was primarily to focus on Paul. And throughout Acts, then you see a couple uh, other figures kind of on the sidelines, people like Barnabas. Uh, today, I want to look at an even more obscure figure, one that only appears really in a couple passages, a guy by the name of Agabus. First passage he appears in is in Acts 11. I'm going to start reading at verse 27. During this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up through the Spirit. Stood up and through the Spirit, predicted that a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. Verse 29. The disciples, each one was able, decided to provide help for the brothers and sisters living in Judea. This they did, sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Second passage he appears, the only other time in Acts, is in Acts 21. This is a bit of a longer passage. I'm going to go ahead and start in verse 1. Uh, this is uh, presumably Luke talking. He's apparently traveling with Paul here. Um, he's traveling with Paul and a few others. So this is where we pick up in verse 1. After we had torn ourselves away from them, we put out to sea and sailed straight to coast. The next day we went to Rhodes and from there to Batara. We found a ship crossing over to Phoenicia, went on board and set sail. After sighting Cyprus and passing to the south of it, we sailed on to Syria. We landed at Tyre, where our ship was to unload its cargo. We sought out the disciples there and stayed within seven days. Through the Spirit, they urged Paul not to go on to Jerusalem. Verse 5. When it was time to leave, we left and continued on our way. All of them, including wives and children, accompanied us out of the city. And there on the beach, we knelt to pray. After saying goodbye to each other, we went to board the ship, and they returned home. We continued our voyage from Tyre and landed at Ptolemais, where we greeted the brothers and sisters and stayed with them for a day. Leaving the next day, we reached Caesarea and stayed at the house of Philip, the evangelist, one of the seven. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. Verse 10, after we had been there a number of days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. Coming to us, he took Paul's belt, tied his own hands and feet with it, and said, the Holy Spirit says, in this way the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem will bind the owner of this belt and hand him over to the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people there pleaded with Paul not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem in the name of the Lord Jesus. When we would not be dissuaded, we gave up and said, the Lord's will be done. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would be with us this morning. God, that our, our worship would be acceptable in your sight. <laughs> Father, I pray that all of us here would have discerning hearts and minds to rightly divide and interpret your word, God, and a spirit of humility and grace to apply it in our own lives. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want you all to imagine for a second that you were in a church service, very similar to this one. But in this service, uh, there's a guest speaker, a man who is um, allegedly known to have a very prophetic voice, whatever exactly that means. And the service goes pretty much as normal, nothing uh, extraordinary. He gives a, a word, it's a good word. And when he's done, there is a woman in the congregation that is about to head off to China um, as a missionary. And so the leadership gathers together with this guest speaker to pray for this woman. And maybe you're sitting there thinking, man, this, this woman's about to leave uh, her home country here in the West, go to a very different culture, very different place, different language.